powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. Finally, election season is done, but just in time for elected officials to get to work in Helena. That's right, Montana's 2019 legislature convenes at the Capitol in less than two months. Today in Helena, the newly elected lawmakers chose their leaders. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison tells us what happened and what it means for the session's agenda. In the House, the top post of speaker went to Representative Greg Hertz of Polson, who's been a leader of the Republican Party's conservative wing in Montana. And in the Senate, Bozeman Republican Scott Sales, another strong conservative, was re-elected as president. Both men said a top priority for Republicans at the next legislature will be balancing the budget without a tax increase. I don't think there's an appetite for Republicans to raise taxes, so it's going to be incumbent upon us to make the budget fit uh, with existing resources. They also expect plenty of discussion on whether to extend the $550 million a year Medicaid expansion program, which ensures about 100,000 low-income Montanans. It's set to expire in June. Voters last week turned down a ballot measure to extend the program and fund the state's share of the cost with higher tobacco taxes. When asked if he supports an extension, Hertz was noncommittal. We're going to have an open mind and look at these policies and make sure we protect the most vulnerable of the people of Montana. There's, there's a lot of ideas on the table. I hate to um, speculate on any of them at this point in time. Sales said he's curious to see what adjustments to the current program its supporters may propose to get it extended. There's going to be a fair amount of horse trading that goes on on that issue, but I would have to think that it's going to, it's going to uh, be one of the major, if not the major issue of the session. Minority Democrats made it clear extending Medicaid expansion is one of their top priorities. But we got to find a way to protect 100,000 people from being kicked off their health insurance. Montanans decided that 185 might not have been the way to go, but nobody decided that we should kick those folks off. Schreiner said Democrats also want to restore some budget cuts made last year to fund programs for the disabled and other low-income citizens. Democratic Governor Steve Bullock comes out with his proposed two-year budget on Thursday. Also on the table is a possible change in House rules that could limit the power of the GOP majority and make it easier to pass certain bills. The four-month legislative session convenes at the state capitol in Helena on the 7th of January. Well, just as thousands of families and fans hit the highways to crisscross the state this weekend for Cat Grizz and state championship play, Bob McGuire joins us now with a warning. Yeah, it's a big winter storm coming our way. Now, today, not much of a problem. It's plenty of sunny skies. The only issue we have is some windy conditions. 65 to 75 mile per hour winds in the front range and also the Beartooth foothills. But then starting on Friday, uh, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., we're looking to see maybe 2 to 5 inches of snow on the plains, maybe 5 to 10 inches of snow up in the mountains. And that starts uh, right on through Friday and we go to 6 a.m. It's a winter weather advisory. So here's how the whole thing's going to play out. You see here on Wednesday and Thursday, not too bad. 6 p.m. Thursday, stuff still hanging up there in Canada. But then on Friday morning, bam, the whole thing drops down into Montana. It starts as rain in the Billings area, which will probably then turn to icy roadways later on that morning. It becomes all snow by noon, and then in the afternoon, that snow sticks around throughout most of the day, right until 10 p.m. by Saturday. The whole thing's out of here. And how much snow are we talking about? Well, for the Billings area, about two and a half inches, almost six inches of Bozeman, and maybe four inches, maybe four and a quarter over at Missoula. It's going to be a terrible drive out there. Just make sure you go very, very early. We'll have more on the forecast in a few more minutes. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. Here in Billings, an overnight shooting is under investigation. The victim told police he was shot while searching for scrap metal in an alley. Now, Billings police say it all happened just before 2 o'clock this morning in the area of North Park. Tonight, police say a 37-year-old man is in stable condition after he was wounded in the lower body by a single bullet. The victim told authorities he was being followed by a man who he has an ongoing dispute with. The suspect allegedly tried to block the man in the alley, causing their vehicles to collide. That's when he says shots were fired and the victim was wounded while he says sitting in his car. Police have identified a possible suspect and at this hour are still searching for him. Public safety in downtown Billings, the topic of the day at a public forum at the Northern Hotel this morning. Q2's Connor Pregitzer tonight reports on what's involved. Citizens, the Billings Police Department, and the Downtown Billings Alliance all came together this afternoon to discuss how we as a community can bolster public safety in the downtown core. Chief Rich St. John spoke about the challenges facing Billings, specifically the vagrant and migrant population, and how these issues are being addressed. As our ultimate goal is not to fill the jail up with, with people who are homeless, who are intoxicated in public, 
uh, who were mentally ill. That's not the place for them. We need to get them to treatment. A way in which BPD has been working to achieve this goal is through the Motivated Alcohol Alternative Program, or MAP, which aims to leverage sighted individuals into treatment as a jail alternative. Chief St. John noted the success of this program, but also some of the issues that are still slowing the process. These included the lack of clean and sober housing in Billings, as well as Montana's lack of public intoxication legislation. Downtown Billings Alliance Executive Director Katie East emphasized the need for communication to resolve these issues going forward. We need to be able to listen, we need to be able to acknowledge what the challenge is, and we need to be able to work together uh, to find a solution. Property crimes were highlighted as one of the challenges posed by this specific population, and thanks to Buchanan Capital, a private contractor was brought in to discuss some of the possible solutions. Mark Johnson is one of three crime prevention through environmental design experts in Montana and Wyoming, and he spoke about some of the basic principles of SEPTED while showing examples from the Billings community. Having clear windows with no nothing on the windows so people can see out of the, bills, the business, uh, trimming vegetation so it's not covering up lighting and, and windows again so people can see out. I mean, a lot of times it's simple maintenance fixes of, of replacing those bulbs that are burnt out uh, on street corners and on buildings and it lights it up because because lighting is probably the number one deterrent uh, in criminal activity when it comes to crimes of opportunity. In Billings, Connor Pregetzer, MTN News. Thank you, Connor. Chief St. John says Billings Police does have one employee trained in crime prevention through environmental design and says he plans to work closely with the Downtown Billings Alliance in the future. A Billings man now identified as the victim of a hunting accident near Virginia City earlier this month. The Madison County Sheriff confirms to Q2 that 50-year-old Michael Drexler of Billings died on the 2nd of November, this after he was accidentally shot by a member of his own hunting party. The group was hunting for elk near Wigwam Creek, that's south of Virginia City, when the shooting occurred. Now the case is still under investigation, but officials do not suspect anything suspicious. If you drive Zimmerman Trail, it could be another couple of weeks before that popular route opens again, and the impending cold snap likely won't help. Take a look at this new video of crews working on the road where new pavement still being put down. Colder temperatures are extending the project because crews can only pave for half of the day. So the bottom line is this means the project most likely will not be completed until after the Thanksgiving holiday. We're told to work on the new roundabout where Zimmerman connects with Highway 3 atop the rims is already slightly behind schedule due to the recent cold and snow last week. So for now, Zimmerman Trail still closed at Rimrock and Zimmerman, but when it's done, the road will be wider. There will be upgraded guardrails along the way, all of which will improve safety. The Montana Women's Run does a lot more than gets thousands of women out moving each spring. Proceeds from the race help support year-round health and wellness for women all across the community. With this year's donations, the cause over the years has donated more than $1,250,000. So this year's funds go to the YWCA, Billings Clinic Foundation, and the Billings YMCA. A portion of the $100,000 raised this year also goes towards scholarships for female cross-country runners at Rocky Mountain College and MSU Billings. Last spring, more than 8,500 women took part in the Montana Women's Run. Next year's race is scheduled for Saturday, May 11th, 2019. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, find out how pulse crops are now becoming the heartbeat for many Montana farmers. Also tonight in Sports, Scott hears from Central's guys about the one thing that could cost them a state title this weekend. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.